Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this concert by the Medwins. Happy holidays, everyone. My, na my, my, name, my name is Rick Wyman, and I'm the conductor. And it's my pleasure, thank you. My pleasure to be, it's my pleasure to be your host and wish you happy holidays and celebrate with this music, with this wonderful band. We're honored that Father John is joining us today, as well as um, Bishop John. We're pleased to have you here. We are honored to rehearse in this uh, very room every Wednesday night, so it's our treat to perform for you here in this spot, and thank you for hosting us, as always. We open with a piece called Bells by Ian McDougall. Uh, McDougall is a Canadian uh, trombonist and composer. He played for many years in a big band that was pretty well known among the 70s and 80s called Rob McConnell's Grammy Award winning big band, The Boss Brass. And so that was a piece that he wrote called Bells. We're gonna continue now with music that is part of the standard band repertoire. In other words, this is a piece that was specifically written for this instrumentation for band as opposed to orchestra. For 40 years, was the director of the Eastman School of Music, but he's also a Pulitzer Prize winning composer. In 1944, he won the Pulitzer Prize for his fourth symphony. This is Chorale and Alleluia. It was his first piece he wrote for band. And as you might expect from the title, it starts with a chorale and then leads into a joyous Alleluia theme. And then the interest, I would argue, comes from the way that those two themes interplay and intertwine as the piece continues. Here's Chorale and Alleluia by great American composer Howard Hanson.
Thank you very much. We're going to um, give our brass players a little bit of a break now after playing a chorale like that. This is a piece uh, that's going to feature the woodwind with percussion, and it's called Mambo on the Housetop. It's a Latin-flavored version of the famous Christmas kids tune, really, up on the housetop. Um, and it's interesting the way this is written. You'll recognize the tune in there, but the woodwinds, the low instruments, tend to often play a standard Latin bass line that, that you might hear in mambo or other Latin tunes. The mid-range instruments tend to play the arpeggios that a piano might play, syncopated arpeggios that a piano might play in a, in a mambo chart. And then, of course, the upper instruments play the melody and some harmony of the song. And you'll hear a couple solos as well. Christian Arroyo will play an oboe solo and then Megan McFadden on piccolo. Here's Mambo on the Housetop featuring the woodwinds and percussion of the net winds. desperately trying to deliver all the presents before the sun comes up Christmas morning. It's not much time to do that, right? After a harrowing night, Santa finally can see the light at the end of the tunnel and starts to sing praises of hallelujah. You all know Handel's hallelujah, right? So this tune is a combination of jingle bells, which we all know, and the, uh, at the beginning, and then Handel's hallelujah chorus at the end. Here's the great jingle bell chase featuring our brass and percussion. We'll see if they can get all the gifts delivered.
time, right? <laughs> nice job. Co uh, Metwin's Brass Section. How about another round of applause for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we continue now with a song that was arranged by Sean O'Loughlin, who is a graduate of New England Conservatory right here in Boston, and he also graduated from Syracuse University. He's written arrangements and music uh, that's been performed by the Boston Pops, Hollywood Bowl, Bowl Orchestra, Syracuse, and other symphonies across the, the country. Um, you know, it's interesting to me when you think about this time of year, and for me, what I really enjoy is hearing creative arrangements on all of these tunes, but it's interesting because I've had debates with people. Some people don't like that. They want to hear the tunes straight up, right? I was uh, leading a church choir one time where, where uh, we were singing a piece that was very creative. And even the pastor at the time was like, uh, I don't like this because it's, it deviates too far from the original hymn. So we'll leave that in your hands as far as how you um, uh, appreciate each of these arrangements. Um, and I'll be interested to hear afterwards what you think of them. Whether they go too far astray, or if you think they do, then I invite you to enjoy uh, the creativity that goes into playing with these familiar tunes. So, this is uh, an arrangement of Carol of the Bells, which of course is uh, one of the most popular carols that we hear at this time of the year. Um, and this arrangement incorporates some moments of Spanish flair. You'll hear castanets. Um, if the tune at the beginning is stated by the bells, uh, with Allison playing the, the bell tune, which of course you might expect with the title. Then there's some back and forth between the woodwinds and brass. Um, then you'll hear fragments of the melody, so here's what I'm talking about. He starts messing with the melody a little bit. Then the horns get a chance to quote um, a phrase from Dvorak's New World Symphony, so we incorporate some other stuff in here. So here's Sean Laughlin's um, treatment of Carol of the Bells.
civilian concert band. It's a community band in Allentown, Pennsylvania. They perform a holiday concert each year at Allentown Symphony Hall. And in November of one particular year, it was 1974, the conductor asked um, this clarinet player, Steve Rustiter, can you write a Hanukkah piece for us? And he said, well, that's not much noise, but I'll do my best. And he created this beautiful piece in only three days. I thought you might enjoy um, his take on, on the piece and how it came about. Being Roman Catholic, I didn't grow up singing Hanukkah songs or celebrating the holiday. I'm familiar with Jewish music from playing clarinet with Klezmer groups, so maybe that explains some of the hyperactive passages for the woodwinds near the end of this piece. I tried to do with the piece what Copeland did in some of his works. Don't get me wrong, I'm nowhere near Copeland's league as a composer. However, in many of his compositions, he composed his own folk songs and hymn tunes. He did this in pieces like Our Town, The Red Pony, and Appalachian Spring, except where he quoted simple gifts. I tried to make my material in the eighth candle sound as if it could be uh, Hebrew music, but they're all composed by me. It's not an arrangement of pre-existing material. Um, and here's what I think he regards as a high compliment. I've had Jewish band directors contact me and ask me where I found all those Hanukkah tunes that they weren't familiar with. <laughs> the simple answer is that they're my own tunes from my own imagination. So here is Steve Russeter's tribute to Hanukkah, the eighth candle. Beautiful piece that I think you'll enjoy. Uh, prayer and dance.
Well, we continue now with a trio of songs that are slaying songs. And I think the description uh, that the publisher uses for this next piece is probably the best way to describe it to you because it's a good sales pitch. Bring some funk with a sassy attitude to your winter concert. This remarkably smooth and fun musical scavenger hunt includes a wealth of holiday tunes including O Come All Ye Faithful, A Little Town of Bethlehem, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and the 12 Days of Christmas with an incredible groove. Influenced by jazz, R&B, soul, and dance music, this Christmas movie is guaranteed to be the hit of the season. Sold, we bought it. Ladies and gentlemen, to conduct you better slay, please welcome the assistant director of the Met Wins and the conductor of the Smith College Wind Ensemble and our fine piccolo player, Megan McFadden. Sergei Prokofiev, great British, I'm sorry, <laughs> Russian, Russian composer, um, 
1934, he wrote um, the film music for a Russian film called Lieutenant Kiji. Um, then he created an orchestral suite from the music that he wrote in the film. And the fourth movement is called Troika. And this is music that accompanied a sleigh ride in the film, uh, a sleigh drawn by three horses, hence the Russian term Troika, which is where that comes from. So there's that original version. Then in the 50s, there was this big band orchestra um, called the Eddie, Soddy, Eddie, Eddie Sodder and Bill Finnegan. They called it the Sodder Finnegan Orchestra. They made a jazz arrangement of this tune, uh, which is pretty fun. I'm gonna have to tell, I don't usually tell people to look up stuff on YouTube, but I found this video today of that band playing this tune, the Eddie Sodic, um, sorry, Sodder Finnegan Orchestra. And it's perfect 50s. The cheesiness, the showmanship, the excellent playing, and the amazing introduction. Like, okay, um, so this is a, a piece that sounds just like a sleigh ride. Um, <laughs> So here's um, Sodder Finnegan, actually a band arrangement of the Sodder Finnegan Orchestra Big Band version of Prokofiev's Midnight Slave. <laughs> Talk about three parts removed, but it's really fun. You'll enjoy it. instrumental song, and it was later, uh, in 1950, that people started adding lyrics. Uh, Mitchell Parrish wrote some uh, lyrics about riding in a sleigh and other wintertime festivities. Um, but we present for you now Slave Ride by Leroy Anderson.
for joining us today. It's been our pleasure to perform for you. We thank uh, Father John and this, and this wonderful church for hosting us all throughout the year. It's been our pleasure to be here and be here with you tonight. Happy holidays to all of you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Oh, I should mention, if you like the band, um, hopefully you do, you've been applauding, so thank you. Uh, we hope you'll join us for our next concert, which will be uh, Sunday, March 3rd at 3 p.m. at the Scottish Rite Museum in Lexington. Um, we play all our concerts there throughout the season, with the exception of this holiday uh, Pops concert. We hope you'll join us for those. Uh, that one, as I mentioned, Sunday, March 3rd. We're calling it Emblems, because the title piece, if you will, is by the great Aaron Copeland that he wrote for, specifically for band, called Emblems. And there's also a piece that's going to feature our great, one of our great bassoonists, Jason Karen. So we hope you'll wow. join us for that. <laughs> Sunday, March 3rd at 3 o'clock at the Scottish Rite Museum. You can visit our website, too, to buy tickets and see more information about the band. So we conclude now with um, Christmas and stars, and, well, Christmas and Sousa Forever. It's really based on Sousa's best march, Stars and Stripes Forever, but it's somewhat of a boisterous rendition of it because it's combined with a number of holiday favorites. But the holiday tunes come quick and furious, so just when you think you maybe figured out one, there's another one that's starting to get woven in there. So see, see how well you can keep up with this concluding song, Christmas and Sousa Forever. Thank you. 